The Bible speaks about alcohol. It's mentioned many times. We find stories about it. We find teachings about it. The Bible is not silent on this topic. It's important to understand what it says. This helps us live lives that honor God. Some people think the Bible forbids all alcohol. This is not true. The Bible does not say all drinking is wrong. It speaks differently about alcohol than some might think. We need to look closely. The Bible addresses alcohol in considerable detail. The term wine appears 232 times, and the phrase fermented drink, referring to stronger alcoholic beverages, is mentioned approximately 20 times. Let's explore this topic in more depth. It doesn't always condemn it. In fact, it sometimes shows it as a blessing from God. For the ancient Israelites, having an abundance of wine and new wine was seen as a sign of God's blessing. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 13, God promises to reward the Israelites' faithfulness with material prosperity, including new wine. Similarly, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 10, states that loyalty and faithfulness to the Lord will result in overflowing barns and vats full of new wine. These passages suggest that possessing and enjoying wine is a mark of divine favor. During their pilgrimages to Jerusalem for various feasts, the Israelites were instructed to bring or purchase wine or other fermented drinks to enjoy and celebrate in the presence of the Lord Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 26. Jesus himself supported the use of wine, as evidenced by his miracle at the wedding feast in Cana John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Additionally, Paul advised Timothy to take a little wine for his stomach issues, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23. These scriptures affirm that wine is viewed favorably by God and is intended to be enjoyed. It can be a part of celebrating life. However, we must remember to enjoy it responsibly. While the Bible speaks of enjoying alcohol, it strongly warns against drunkenness. It is important to understand the distinction between moderate consumption and overindulgence. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1 tells us, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. This ancient wisdom highlights the potential for alcohol to lead us astray, causing us to act in ways we might regret. This verse makes it clear, drinking too much is foolish and dangerous. Drunkenness leads to trouble. It impairs our judgment, making us vulnerable to making poor decisions that can have lasting consequences. The Bible connects it with other sins. These include anger, foolishness, and sexual immorality. When under the influence, people often lose control of their emotions and actions, leading to behaviors that are harmful to themselves and others. Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21 lists drunkenness among other acts of the flesh. These acts are described as being in direct opposition to the fruits of the Spirit, which include love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These acts work against the Holy Spirit. When we give in to drunkenness, we are more likely to succumb to other temptations and stray from the path of righteousness. They harm our relationship with God. The guilt and shame that often follow a night of heavy drinking can create a barrier between us and our faith, making it harder to seek forgiveness and return to a state of grace. It is crucial to seek support and guidance from our community and faith leaders to overcome the challenges of alcohol abuse. By doing so, we can find strength in our faith and the support of those around us to lead a healthier, more fulfilling life. Remember, moderation and mindfulness are key. By being aware of our consumption and its effects, we can enjoy the gifts of life without falling into the peril of drunkenness. The Bible addresses alcohol extensively. In summary, Christians can lead holy and obedient lives while consuming alcohol in moderation. However, the Bible provides strong warnings against addiction and drunkenness. A Christian cannot live a life of loving obedience and service to the Lord while abusing alcohol. Therefore, if a Christian chooses to drink, they are free to do so. But if it risks leading to addiction or drunkenness, wisdom dictates abstention. Additionally, we are called to be mindful of others' needs when making decisions about alcohol consumption. See Romans chapter 14 verses 19 through 21. Should Christians drink alcohol? The Bible doesn't fully condemn drinking alcohol. What it does condemns is drunkenness. It's a matter of personal conviction. Each Christian must decide what they believe is right. Some Christians choose not to drink. They want to avoid temptation. They don't want to be a stumbling block to others. Other Christians believe moderate drinking is acceptable. They feel it doesn't harm their relationship with God. Both views can be held within the Christian faith. 
Christians may disagree about alcohol, that's okay. What's important is how we treat each other. We should show grace and respect. Romans chapter 14 verses 1 to 15 teaches about this. We should accept one another even with differences. Our unity is found in Christ. We are united by our love for Him. Let's focus on that. Let's build each other up. Let's show love and understanding. This is what pleases God.